Amanda here, um, and I wanted to do a video about some um, games that I use for my kids. And most of these are like individual games that they can do on their own, their thinking skills. And I've been meaning to do this video for a while, and I got sick right after Christmas, and I haven't been able to film. And so I'm trying to get some kind of uh, built up again because it's it's been hectic so anyway so we're gonna start with um, this first game is not a single player you need at least two people to play and this is um, the sneaky snacky squirrel game and I did get this on Amazon so I will link it in the box below um, it has it is good for counting I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old so she doesn't need it but she will play with her little sister um, but it's good for um, counting colors and fine motor so I'm gonna show you it's got this whole thing like the the game board is actually inside which I wonder if I could flip this so I can show you the game board so if you flip it over um, the inside is just the tree so this is the inside of the box and what you do is it comes with these little acorns that you can see right here um, and there's yellow and it comes with four of these so that's why you can have two to four players so the idea is these little tree stumps have five circles on them there's a green one a red one a yellow one a blue one and a purple one and so what every player has one of these and the idea is all of these acorns are in this box so they're all like rolling around in this box and what you do is it there's a spinner and you spin you spin the little game wheel and um Whatever it lands on. If it lands on a color, then you pick up that color. And if it lands on just the one or the two, you get to pick up that many acorns of whatever color. And then there's a sneaky squirrel that you can steal from somebody else. There's a lose a turn, and then there's a wind. And so the wind knocks all the acorns off your tree stump, and you have to start all over again. So, um, so you can see where the color is. You can see where the counting is. So the fine motor is they actually have this little squirrel tong thing. Like it, you squeeze it together and you have to use your fingers. And so they have to reach down in the box and try to pick up the acorn with this little squirrel. And then they have to kind of separate it to set it down on their log. Which can be a little difficult at times. So um, I really like it. We've played, we play it quite a bit. Um, the girls have fun with it, so um, I do I do recommend this game. I think it's fun, and I think it's good for um, those fine motor skills and, you know, counting and colors and all that good stuff. So, I'm going to pause right here because my battery's about to die and change it out, and then I'll be back. Alright, so, next game we're going to talk about is, um... Let's do our smart games. I've got two of these, and then I've got several others on my to-buy list. Um, once we finish up with a couple of these and have went through all the challenges, then I'll pick up a couple new ones. But the first one is the Three Little Piggies. Um, I really like these. I, we have the Three Little Piggies, and we have a Little Red Riding Hood. And they also have, I think, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. There's a sw squirrels go nuts. There's there's a whole bunch of these. But the idea here is they have like this little position tray, and they come with like different pieces. Uh, Snow White comes with not Snow White. Um, little Red Riding Hood comes with one um, house, and then it comes with the wolf and Snow White. And so um, the little challenge book basically has two parts it has a well it has four levels but like one part has the three pigs and then the other if you flip it over and start by the other side you have the pig or a pig and the wolf and then uh, red Riding hood's the same the easy side just has snow white getting to her house and the other side has snow white and the wolf trying to get there at the same time um 
So this one has houses that you have to place in different ways. Sometimes you have to place it over top of the pig and then sometimes you have to place it to where the pig and the wolf are outside of the house. Um, and then Snow White has trails and so, and they're in certain positions and so you have to figure out how you can get the trail from the character to the door of the house. And so it's really neat and it does have four levels. You have starter, junior, expert, and master. So you can kind of see maybe if it will focus. There it goes. Um, so you can see there's nighttime and then there's daytime. Um, so you have all four levels in each one. Get out. I need to go back. Put the light on. Okay. Um, so you have um, daytime and nighttime. So really the daytime ones are going to be the easiest. So you can go through all four of the levels there and then you can flip over and do the nighttime, which are going to be harder and then go through all four levels again. So, um, and I think each, the three little pigs one has 48 challenges. They both do. Red Riding Hood does too. But the three pigs is supposed to be three to six years. And Red Riding Hood is supposed to be four to seven years. Um, although my four-year-old who has been doing these for a while, um, she likes the Red Riding one better. Um, even though it's supposed to, you're supposed to be older when they start it. She likes to play it more. Um, so another one that I have, this is... Uh, Brain Builder series. I was looking to see who made this one. Fox Mind. So this is Zoo Logic. Um, it comes with tiles and then it has rules. So it has uh, like dogs, two different dogs, and then a cat and a mouse, and then one thing that each of them eat. And there are rules based on. Cut the light off. So, uh, there are rules based on which ones you can put in which um, areas. Because certain characters can't be put next to other characters. And then you get so far into it and there are like ants or um, a bull or there's other things that you can't put the tiles next to. So, they have to really remember what the rules are and then figure out... It tells them, like, which tiles they need to fill in, but then, like, here's a bull right here, and you can't put certain animals on top of the bull or beside of the bull or whatever. So, it gets a little tricky. So, um, my oldest does this one. This one is for ages five and up, and you can... Um, like, I usually sit down with my oldest and help her check these because once she gets so far into them, um, they, they are tricky. You really have to think about it. Um, there are 60 um, puzzles in, or 60 challenges in this uh, logic game. Um, the next one is one that both the girls play, and this one's called Smart Cookies. And so basically you get this grid board right here and then it'll show you the challenges and there's there's nine cookies um there's three different shapes and three different colors and so there's one of each combination there's 64 puzzles um and this is supposed to start at age six although my four-year-old can do this uh, pretty pretty well uh, so it kind of tells you it starts you off telling you you know where the first one needs to go and then it'll show you where the others can't go. And so by process of elimination, they figure out how to fill in the whole cookie sheet with the nine cookies. So that one's neat. Um, they both like that one pretty good. Plus they like to pretend they're just uh, baking cookies and, and doing that. Um, the last one I wanna show today, there are some others that we use, but these are the ones we use most often. And I've got to see if I can find it in my bag of goodies down here. Um, I don't see the bag for, there it is, 
Um, this one is, um, this is Think Fun. That's who made it. But it is um, Rush Hour Junior. And I do have the regular, like, adult version of Rush Hour. Is it going to focus? Please focus. Please focus. There it is. Rush Hour Junior. And this one's really fun. It's got 40 challenges, but you have a little, you have a little tray and you have cars that will fill up the tray in this little handy bag. Holds them all. And anyway, the idea is you, um, it'll tell you where to put so many of the cars and then you can only move them like up or down forward or backwards, I guess you could say. And then there's an ice cream truck. And the ice cream truck will always, there's a exit right here. The ice cream truck will always be on this row and it's usually sitting in the back and there's cars like in front of it. And so you have to move them to get the ice cream truck out. So that one's really fun. Um, when I was teaching school, I took this to work with me and um, we played with it at work. So, <laughs> Um, cause it is fun. Um, if you have any questions about any of these, um, as I get others, um, I'll try to spend some more time talking about them. There's still more down here that we use. Um, some of them are more specific to, you know, reading or math or, um, more academic in nature than, um, just your thinking skills games. So, um, as I come across other stuff. Uh, that we use. I will try to do another video of just like math games that we like to use, which I probably should have done Sneaky Squirrel in the math. But anyway, um, so if you have any questions, uh, I don't know if the comments will work or not. My email is in the description box below. If you have any questions, um, you are welcome to email me. Um, I also have uh, the community tab, I think, that I can do uh, comments on. So if you have something, you can uh, leave it over there. I'll try to open up a post or something for this video for thinking skills and um, leave that there. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like uh, homeschool videos and homeschool resources, or even if your kids go to public schools and you want to find them some uh, activities to do at home on snow days and through the summer, these are some great resources. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.